So there is one steel book in here. <clears throat> They're on this side. So let's move this away. So let's start with the steel book first. <clears throat> hey there, Kubrick. Welcome, man. Oh, nice. Yeah, this looks gorgeous. So first up, <clears throat> and I do not have this movie in any format let alone in a 4K format, and this is the 4K edition. So this is, let's do this right, the Steelbook. And for the people that know my comic book roots, uh, like my love of comics, that this, this here artwork is done by uh, Spawn's Todd McFarlane. So let's check on the inside. Oh, there's a poster. Okay, so you, so you threw in the Rituals poster. I gotta get Rituals, you know. I need to get this movie. This is a really good movie. So on the inside, there is Jamie Lee Curtis, and let's see, it's the 4K, and there is the Blu-ray edition as well. And you see Jamie Lee Curtis facing off with Michael Myers. This is epic. I saw this in theater. Uh, love, thank you, Jason, by the way. We're off to a great start, um, but I don't own it. Uh, I saw it in theater a couple times. And I really, really like the 2018 one. I still don't own this movie. I gotta get this movie, Rituals. That's like, it's one of my favorites. It's like a Hale Holbrook film. But this is gorgeous. The artwork by Todd McFarlane is fantastic. Representing Canada there. <clears throat> Ronan Flick sale on right now? Oh, don't tell me that, man. This is when I'm broke, man. <laughs> well, tell me because we'll probably check it out afterwards. That's a good idea. Let's put that back there for a second. <clears throat> Next up is one of my favorite films, and I definitely don't have this version of it. Uh, and truly, truly love this movie. You guys know I love this film. And it is the three disc limited edition, lenticular cover for Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. This is the one with the soundtrack. And I really, really wanted this one. I wanted the soundtrack, especially there's a booklet in here. Uh, so you got the Walter Rosati soundtrack here, uh, booklet by Michael Gung Gingold. So you guys know I, I love my full chain. Hey there, Richard. And lenticular edition, Blue Underground full chain. Hells yeah. And next up, we're getting some more full Because who loves full more than me? I, I don't know. Not even full I don't think. And that is New York Ripper. I love the lenticular on this one here. Again, this has the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack to these films. So, we got the soundtrack here by Francesco De Masi, a uh, booklet by Travis Cra Crawford. Really sucks. Yeah, I guess I should look inside, shouldn't I? So, oh, there's the interior artwork. That's the classic artwork most of you guys know from New York Ripper. Really stoked to have this. Let's check out the one for uh, Friday's Bed Cemetery. So, should be some classic stuff here as well. Nice. I love that they use this. <clears throat> we'll look at these a little bit more. I'm going to be reviewing all this stuff later on down the road, by the way. Oh, nice. Okay, this one I didn't know about. Uh, so, I really like this film. And it's one of the Shutter exclusives. Unfortunately, here in where I'm from, uh, we can only get the Shutter stuff like on DVD. There's no like Shutter Blu-rays around where I'm at. Uh, but I actually really like this anthology film, and it is Scare Package. Now, the DVD of this one has like some of the features, but the Blu-ray is the only way to get the uh, get the whole package. Which because so, basically this came on on the last drive-in with uh, Joe Bob Briggs, and if you buy the uh, Shutter Blu-ray edition of it. You get the full like uh, sh the uh, last driving experience. So you get the beginning and the and the ending, basically where Joe Bob's talking at the beginning. He's you know talking at the end of the film as well. Um, really excited about that. Uh, love this film. Really like this movie. Demonia, good film. All right, so there's more here. Uh -huh. Ooh. Coming out. 
So that is... Wow, okay. So there's nine films in all here, guys. So I've shown you four. There's four more films to go. Jason, thank you so much. Uh, you are definitely the man. And uh, there's some surprises here. <clears throat> so first off, this is... I don't know if this one's still available or not. I know they're probably the Arrow version of it is, but the Ronin Flicks one, uh, the Code Red uh, limited edition one, I'm not sure if it is or not, but this is Beyond the Door. And I really like this this artwork. Hey there, Chris. <clears throat> There's features on this too. Like this is some decent features on here. You get like two audio commentaries on here. Uh, 35 years later featurette with the uh, director with Richard Johnson with Judith Mills and the writer uh, Englishman in, in Italy with an uh, interview with Richard Johnson brand new interview with star Gabriel Lavia uh, trailer so I wonder if there'll be different artwork on the inside classic artwork so there you can see the original Beyond the Door artwork big fan of this movie <clears throat> want to review this film on the channel by the way this is one I've been wanting the next one I don't know so anybody here that knows Asian cinema you're going to have to help me out a bit <clears throat> put this one out gotta be careful with the next one. <clears throat> oh man everything's been amazing so far man I'm super intrigued by this one Okay, so let me know if any of you guys know this film. So this is The Devil. So this is a is it Asian film. It looks like an Asian film, Korean film. This is by Masker Video. And the word Fulci is on the back of it. Hitting like a brick to the face, the simple story of a con man with eyes on a family's hotel business becomes a horrifying fever dream of ghosts and gore oh I'm liking, I'm liking that the gruesome visage of a vengeful spirit seeks her unseen murder a supernatural virus fills its victims with squirming slithering things which burst and ooze from their mouths and flesh while a witch offers equally grisly and unsettling cures like a distant cousin of Fulci's disturbing dream logic I'm going to butcher the name by the way so I apologize already uh, Jen Chi Chang disturbs and disorients with a messy melange of atrocities in the slimy s specimen of Taiwanese. Okay, there we go. Horror. Masker Video proudly presents the devil for the first time in HD with a brand new 4K restoration from its original elements. Wow. So I know nothing, nothing about this film. But I am so stoked for it. It's awesome. Cool. Because this, you guys know this is my style. This is my, uh, this is my type. I have heard about the new label Air 4444, but I don't have any other stuff, man. Lots of bugs. Well, I'll, I'll have to get through that part. I do have, like... Okay, so the next one we're going to be careful with uh, because uh, there's nothing, no nude being shown. So we're, we're good. We're good. But it is from one of my favorite underrated companies that, that doesn't get enough love. And Jason, you know me, man. Uh cult epics as you guys know I've I preach the word cult epics a lot but uh, unfortunately uh, I I don't have enough of them in my collection I got like a couple like sets I think this is my, my first cult epic like single release so uh, remember there's no <clears throat> everything is being covered so we're safe the Claire Sinclair show I have never seen this, but uh, featuring Bunny Yeager's last sitting. So Bunny Yeager was a uh, was a famous photographer. She worked a lot for Playboy magazine, actually. Um, so this is, if I remember correctly, I think this is like kind of the last like interview that she really did, uh, and it was for like Claire Sinclair. She's a uh, how do you put? It? She's well, she's a model. 
but uh, n- not just any model. She she does like Betty Page style stuff. Hey, the Ragman. <clears throat> so that's a. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. I've never seen this. Has anybody seen this? The Claire Sinclair show. I'm guessing it's not for the kitties. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I got to I got to cover this one bit because there is no idea on this one. All right, there we go. So I have the DVD of this one. I don't have the Blu-ray. Uh, this was put on a Blu-ray a couple times. There is a a Severin Blu-ray. This one that has a soundtrack, but apparently, from what I've heard, this is the best version of uh, this is better than the Severin version, even though the features are different. And doesn't have the soundtrack this is the better i guess print of the film and it is my personal one of my personal favorite top five jallos of all time and so if you're a jallo fan and you're wondering like what is a jallo that you need to have in your collection uh well uh the strange vice of mrs ward so this is the shameless numbered edition and oh, it's numbered okay 3324 of 6000 i normally show you the back but shameless is is shameless for putting their uh, <clears throat> there's there should be like yeah there is uh, so there's alternate artwork as well so I'll try to show you what I can of, uh, of that so I like this here called next that's kind of cool <clears throat> really. Dude, you went above and beyond, Jason. Because this, this is definitely, you know, this is some, uh, Strange Vice is one of my favorite, like, channels of all time. <clears throat> so, f- super stoked. And, what I'm really, really excited about, and this one I knew was coming, because <clears throat> I haven't seen this film, and I don't own any of this company's releases. I don't have a single release by, by uh, Dark Side Releasing. And I've wanted Dark Side Releasing titles in my uh, library for like a long time. Uh, I just haven't like been able to grab some yet. It's up to you, man. There's some people like you want this get them both uh but i it they, a lot of her blah, well i'm gonna get this out right um go for them both but i'd say uh do the uh i'd go for the shameless one first if you're region free yes because i've heard like there's a german one that's supposed to be like really good now the the shameless one was taken from the german encode i think and severin did a different encode uh there again either way you get this movie is fantastic because it is a really, really good movie. But I'm I'm really glad to have the Shameless Edition to go right alongside of my other Shameless Blu-rays that I got. And aren't enough. But a Dark Side releasing one. So I don't have any Dark Side releasing. Well, I do now, so thanks to Jason. So you guys can all thank Jason for this video because that's why you're getting a live video on a Monday. So this is glass. I know nothing about this film. And I'm trying to keep that way. Because uh, I want to go in blind on this. Uh, Darkshire Releases is extremely proud to present the new collector series reissues of Bravido Giallo's erotic and violent Neo Giallo trilogy Glass. The second film in the trilogy is presented here with all new never before seen special features, bonus discs, wow, and full color booklets. So let's let's look at that. Uh, so it's got director's auto commentary. I love the features on this. Are you ready? Director's auto commentary, m- the mug shots, music videos, deleted scenes yoga lesson first thing caught my eye with with tira dent short films demons in the dark and out of my skin exclusive black and white metallic version of glass so i guess an oir version of the movie glass that's i love that i definitely can't share the inside cover but uh there is the movie in the supplements and there's a black and white version of the film on here as well there is a booklet which I won't look too into because I don't want to uh, see uh... hey there Amy 
I got some I got some stuff here, some Asian stuff. Which I'll show you. I I showed a second ago, hopefully you saw it. Really intrigued by this film. I have never had a dark side releasing one. Maybe it'll get me addicted. I don't know. It's happened before. I had somebody send me a uh, MVD rewind, and now all of a sudden I'm getting a bunch of them. It is severely appreciated, Jason. 100%. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm taking this as an early birthday gift. <clears throat> so, for those that just came in, I want to get this. Uh, I want to put this all here. So, the titles that I just unboxed are Dark Side Releasings, Glass, kind of a Neo Jallo, which is interesting because I don't know what a quite sure if I know what the Neo Jallo is. There is the Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, the Shameless edition of it, uh, Shameless numbered edition as well, by the way. So, always stoked for that. You know, I love the numbered editions. Cult Epics. The uh, Claire Sinclair Show featuring uh, Bunny Yeager's last sitting. So, uh, big Bunny Yeager fan. So, that's going to be really cool to listen to in the interview. Here's one that AME is going to definitely uh, probably know. And that's The Devil, put it by Masker Video. This is a Taiwanese film. I don't know this one, so I'm kind of excited to check that one out. Here's the Gore Fest, so that should be fun. <clears throat> a Ronin Flix exclusive uh, of for Beyond the Door. Juliet Mills, I'm always a big Juliet Mills fan. The Shutter Original, going to be a classic. Scare Package, I really like this one. A lot of humor to this one. Uh, my dad didn't like this one at all, actually. I loved it. Uh, we kind of like part of the ways of that but I, I'm excited to get this because I want the the Joe Bob Briggs last drive-in edition of that I, I want more of those with Joe Bob Briggs last drive-in but we can't get that I can only find the DVDs around here and they're not included on the uh, on the DVDs so this is a three disc limited edition House by the Cemetery with Lucio Fulci by Lucio Fulci with the soundtrack included and the booklet and the lenticular cover really excited about that um, one of my personal favorite Fulci's right here the New York Ripper again the lenticular cover soundtrack I want I want to get all these for the sound I want to get the 4k's and all these for the soundtracks um, unfortunately when they started doing these they didn't transport over the hey there Mr. Sushi uh, they didn't transport over the soundtracks or the booklets or even the lenticulars over to the uh, their 4k editions so there's the 4k's are incomplete I think that uh, Heath from uh, Cinema Serial Men said it best in that if you really like these films like New York Ripper and like Maniac and whatever you're going to get the lenticulars and you're probably going to get the 4Ks as well because that's a complete package for those films. And last but definitely not least uh, and going back to the comic book portion of, of my channel that I did yesterday is the 2018 Halloween film with the Limited edition, Todd McFarlane Steelbook. Really, this is the 4K edition of it, by the way. Super stoked to watch this. I'll probably watch this again sometime this week. Uh, I'll definitely watch it again before the uh, the new film comes out. See that? I'll be honest with you, John. I thought about that type of thing, but the, here's the thing. The 4Ks are really good, too. Like, the the but this this is this is insanely good and insanely generous um which by the way was the word that my better half used uh when she unboxed it because she unboxed it upstairs at her in her office so see i work downstairs and uh she has an office upstairs where she does where she works so basically if, where's my birthday um what's my birthday month uh so my birthday is at the end of the month so whenever anybody uh Whenever I get a, something comes in here, uh, basically she takes it. She takes it from me, and uh, if it's something I can see later on, she'll she'll show she'll give it to me later. But she goes and she checks everything first, like as it comes out. Hey there, Jamie. 
I just unboxed some stuff, man. Some really cool stuff. Did you see? <clears throat> Legend of the Mountain. McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I'm going to go shot in the dark. I'm going to say McCabe. Both should, should be good. <clears throat> I love that. I, I love the McFarlane art on this. I really do. I have no idea what the devil is. I'm so intrigued by that one. Uh, same with the uh, glass. I've never seen glass before either. They got two from McCabe. I'm trying to remember what Legend of the Mountain is, actually. Are you not a Ripper fan? <laughs> How much is a Jason Priestley fan? Like, there's some incredible stuff here, man. Um, how can you not, Jamie, how can you not? New York Ripper. The one of the classiest films you've ever seen. I like New York Ripper, I really do. I understand some people don't get into it and stuff. That's like there's some people, I think it was Master Chaos said, uh, that uh, he was going to sell uh, the one that he got recently. A hitch in the dark because you know it's a it is a it's a dark film this might be the first one I watched though I'll oh, see now there's where we di where we differ I'm really intrigued by this and this the Claire Sinclair show man you know me well So, Fulci and Franklin get watched a lot in this house. We're like huge Fulci Franklin fans. I'm, eventually, I'm going to do like a Fulci t shirt too. Uh, I just got to figure out exactly how, uh, how to do that, how I want to get that done. I want to check something here. So, somebody said, I think it was Master Chaos, not sure if he's still here right now, uh, that there was a Ronan Flick sale going on right now. I'm a huge Ronan Flick fan, so. Uh, Oh man, there is too. So if anybody wants to lovingly donate to the channel, there's a donation box like linked down below there as well. I, I love New York River. That is one of my favorite Fulgies. It's there's just something about it. it Sleeves factor is just, mwah, just, just, just right there. Touches ends a good movie. <clears throat> All right. So you guys want to look at the Ronan Flick stuff? You want to, you want to see the Ronan Flick uh, sales site? Want to go there? Want to do that? Want to tempt you? Do you want me to tempt you? Do you really want me to tempt you? Gates of Hell, New York Ripper, and Zombie. Good choices. But I'm surprised, John, that there's no of Lucio Fulci's classic Jello uh, on your list there. You know, tor don't torture ducklings, like some amazing stuff like that. You think of any deep cuts from 1983? Send them Matthew's way because it's his birthday this month too. Buying lotto tickets. Well, twisted. If you win on the lotto, don't forget your good old friend Aaron here. All right. <clears throat> So let us <laughs> look how inappropriate New York Ripper is. It is. It is fairly inappropriate. All right. Look at that. Look at that sexy bear. Um, so let's go to, to the 
Uh, let's go. Let's go to the. Uh, what? Well, where's it at? I'm looking at the wrong one. What the hell are you doing there? So the bear is still there. Yes, it is. Good. So let's see what they're saying there. Extra th spring forward sale. Sale begins three March 9th. Okay, so begins tomorrow at 2 p.m. and ends at the on the 14th. Maybe I'll have a chance. I don't know. We'll see. Let's view the collection. Let's see what what's here. All right. So I got a few of these. So some of these I can actually uh, give you. So I get an extra 30% off the current low sale price when you spend $50 or more on any of the 40 plus titles in the Spring Forward Collection. Enter code AWAKENING at checkout. And yes, Dave, thank you for remi reminding people of what I forgot to do. All right, it's time for me to go in to YouTuber mode for a second. Hey there, everybody. If you're enjoying this video right now, please make sure to hit that like button. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification thing so that you know when the next video is coming up and all that good youtube -y type of jazz. All right, I am Aaron, and let's look at the uh, website. So first off, we got Charles Bronson and the Mechanic. Great film. Um, really like that one. I recently got Shredder. Um, one that I, I'd wanted for, uh, for a while. It came with a little poster. It has alternate artwork on it. There's like a couple interviews on it. There's an interview. There's commentary. I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> Shredder, not exactly the most exciting Jallo, oh, sorry, most exciting slasher that you're ever going to see. It's fun. I mean, it's not something you're going to go back to the well to uh, like a, a lot of times. But you'll definitely enjoy watching it uh, when you do. <clears throat> also, for those that did not watch the AEW pay-per-view last night, uh, we had two big two people come in. We had the uh, kind of the indie TNA guy Ethan Page, but the big signing for last night that uh, we talked about it was Christian Cage, uh, and I will go out there. I will say it: Christian Cage better signing than CM Punk. Yes, I think so. Only so long, Mister Punk, that you can coast on the pipe bomb, <laughs> and I love Punk, but. <clears throat> Okay, so look here. We got Lone Wolf McQuaid. Great movie. Chuck Norris. David Carradine. Cool release, too, by the way. New 2K scan from the Interpositive. New audio commentary with director Steve Carver. Uh, actors Robert Beltran and LQ Jones. Producer Yoram Benami. Moderated by C. Courtney Joyner. I love C. Courtney Joyner. It's almost spring, though. This is the thing. But I think you should have Shrek. If you've got, like... If you're collecting slashers like me, like Jason, you gotta have Shredder in the collection. New interviews with Leon Isaac Kennedy, LQ Jones, Robert Beltram. Uh, so, again, in other words, features. There's features on this one. Next up is one that my better half bought in the last sale, uh, because <clears throat> it's because so it's because from Canada. Well, that helps. Uh, you're gonna notice a lot of the really great wrestlers are actually from Canada. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but uh, but no, uh, Christian is one of those guys that should have been like a main star, right, right out of the gate, like really early, when uh from WWE they wasted him, and in uh, TNA he went to TNA and you got to see what he could do. So if anybody that's never seen Christian's run in TNA, anybody that's ever watched him in TNA knew as soon as like the entrance music came up. I had Kristen Cage as my choice. <laughs> All right, next up is Death Wish 3. So this is Death Wish, not un, not du, but toi. So Death Wish 3. Uh, let's see what we got here. Do we have any, like, it looks like, it looks like it's got a slip. You're right, these are all MDM releases. We've got good old Martin Balsam, Deborah Raffin in this one here. New 2022 case scan from another positive interview with actor Kirk Taylor from The Giggler. Audio commentary with Paul Talbot. Uh, you're never going to get me saying Benton bad about Christian, that's for sure, because that's, that's, that's my guy, man. His TNA run was amazing. <clears throat> 
So curse three blood sacrifice. So I know a lot of you are thinking like curse three. Do I really, really need curse three? Well, let me put it to you this way. Do you need a movie with Christopher Lee with Dallas and three's companies, Jenna Lee Harrison? I think you do. I, I, I really think you do. I think he'll come in. If he comes in as a bad guy, it'll be interesting to see because he's good as a bad guy. And the thing is, he's still young enough to like work, but he's also at that point where <clears throat> he's he's like big enough and he's been around long enough that he his experience uh, will help a lot of the the younger uh, people over there in uh, TNA. They need more experienced people in there. They got like people like Tully Blanchard, Sting, you know, uh, like Billy Gunn. Fantastic, but Christian's a mind in the same way that uh, guys like Paul Heyman or uh, CM Punk, their minds, they're, they know wrestling. And uh, that's what you want. You want somebody that has a mind for it. And Christian definitely has a mind. So he that means he can work both sides of the ring. People wondered about Big Show, but that's the thing because he can do big si both sides of the ring. But Big Show is more of like a, you know an event type character. Uh, can do more with the talking, so he'll be more on commentary and stuff. But Christian, I expect him to do like stuff in the ring. <clears throat> so we got too scared to scream here, which I, I totally pass over. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> What's that that they used to say? Was it Vince McMahon likes big sweaty man, right? Vince McMahon likes big sweaty man. Um, too scared to scream. Love this cover, by the way. I saw this the V. This is the actual VHS cover, by the way, for this one. There has to be a morning after, but only if you survive the night before. I love that tag. A website right here, man. It is RoninFlix.com. Uh, Pokeso uh, just R O N I N F L I X dot com. So this is a sale. They're going. It's starting tomorrow. We're just going over all the titles that are on the sale right now. As you guys know, I normally do a website dive. So this think of this as a as a website dive. Because he, they pushed Britt Baker in the wrong way initially. They put her on, on as a face. And it's only since she started going on as like a heel that really uh, we've been able to see Britt Baker do like do some really good stuff. We got Ann Archer. We got Ann Archer in this one. Mike Connors. Ian McShane. Leon Isaac Kennedy. John Hurd. What a great cast. Director Tony Lobianco. Again, an actor. Actor turned director. I, I It's been years, man. I remember liking this movie. Um... Like, I remember really liking this film. It's been years since I've seen it. If if AEW has any... If I get any complaint about AEW, they got to work harder with their women's division because they have some talented female wrestlers there and they're not doing enough to get them over. Gas Pump Girls. Okay. So, Gas Pump Girls. Now, correct me if I'm wrong because you guys know I can be wrong. I think this one has the girl from uh, Halloween, actually. The first Halloween film. Judith Myers in it. Is it her? Because I know the girl from Friday the 13th Part 2 is in this one. The one with the jean shorts. Remember the girl with the jean shorts? What's her name? No, no Kirsten Baker. She's in it. Okay, so wrong about the, about the uh, Halloween girl, but this does have Kirsten Baker. So if you remember her from... Uh, She's the one that gets the uh, to go skinny dipping, and uh, and Russell Todd like takes her clothes. So Kirsten Baker's on this one, and so is Steve Bond. Steve Bond, for those that know uh, soap operas, for instance, Steve Bond was in, did a few of those. Director Joel Bender, auto commentary with Bender, moderated by Jeff McKay. So that should be a really fun one. Oh yeah, like all, all the matches for were fantastic. That, that's the thing; they just need to book them better. They have another. Oh, I forgot about Mackie Atiel, a uh, incredible wrestler. She's so good. All right, so next up is three fifteen. I this, I thought this once had the tagline, and I could be wrong here. Uh, three fifteen, a moment of truth. Um, Something like that. 
No one ever stood up to the cobras. He was one of their own. Now he's their only one who stands in their way. It begins at 3.15, if it's ever going to end. Adam Baldwin. Deborah Foreman. Danny De La Paz. Gas Pump Girls is definitely a get. <clears throat> there we go. See it. Ha ha. It is the moment of truth. I really wish Adam Baldwin wouldn't have turned into such like a kind of a jerk behind the scenes. I really like a lot of his work. So it wouldn't stop me from buying it because, you know, I like that this movie is my childhood, so. <laughs> my youth. We got Active Vengeance here. Active Vengeance, I'm. Is this the one? Did this one go by like another title at one point? Is this the one that had the the guy with the uh, with the cheap looking Jason mask on the cover of it? It had nothing to do with like Friday 13th. But the cover of it, I had at one point it said like this cheap looking Jason mask. All right, there's some really good titles here, like some really good stuff. Uh, Bucktown with Fred Williamson and Pam Greer. Uh, Iron War Warrior, there's a really cool one. Uh, I think we got that one actually. Uh, Death Warrant, this I don't have, this is a good one. Heavenly Kid, I love Heavenly Kid. Uh, another incredible one. Gonna buy the rest of you. Oh man, I'm jealous, Jason. Also, on his rape squad, that's the one. Thank you, Jamie. That is the one, though, because I remember seeing it at a VHS store. And at first, I thought, oh wow, this is a, like a, a slasher film. So I picked it up. It was not a slasher film. <laughs> Land of Doom. I gotta look this cover. I just love this cover. Uh, Land of Doom. Did anybody see the uh, the Scream Factory uh, or Show Factory Special Edition? The Steelbooks coming out with the Silver Danning uh, uh, NECA figure. So I love these type here. New interview with actress Deborah Renard. Gray smoke hovers over a ravaged and barren wasteland, a place that time forgot. The future. Two warriors, Harmony and Anderson, dare to defy the. Their post hop well, Holocaust existence and go in search of a peaceful life. They have heard of Blue Lake, a city where there is no war, but angry tribes of desperate men stalk their every move. Harmony and Anderson must wage the most brutal war so they can live a life in peace. Death Warrant's a really solid looking one. These are the type that my better half likes. These are, this is the type of sale that she would l l enjoy. It's just coming at the wrong time for us right now. Because she would love this sale. Mom is here. I remember mom. Uh, Clifford. <sighs> Some people love that, but not really my jam. Uh, maybe I got to rewatch it. But, uh, you know... <sighs> Not sure, man. And I'm a Martin Short. You know, he's Canadian. I like Martin Short. But eh, I don't know. Now, Night Visitor. This is one that my good friend Brian Sauer from Just the Disc and Pure Cinema Podcast and Just the Disc YouTube channel, uh, like, has recommended. Night Visitor is one I want to see. We've got, like, again, we got the Canadian connection here. <laughs> Claire is a muscle. Uh, then we got Elliot Gould and the... Ever lovely Shannon Tweed. For those that don't know, Shannon Tweed is from my home province of Newfoundland. Uh, and yes, so much yes. So I'm going to guess that there might be a bit of nudity courtesy of Shannon Tweed in Night Visitor. See, I remember this film, but with a much, much different cover. So we got The Beast with a Million Eyes, Moon and Scorpio. Love the cover on that one. Okay, we're getting to some more classic stuff here. Look, so we got The Delta Force. Um, opposing Force, what is that? 
The cover caught my attention. Where civilization ends and survival begins. <clears throat> Moon and Scorpio looks fantastic. I don't remember it. Anybody here seen Moon and Scorpio? I got a feeling like I should know it. Tom Skerritt, Lisa Eckhorn, Anthony Zerby, Richard Roundtree. Nice. HD Master, new commentary, alternate ending. See this, much sexier cover. Just putting it out there. But if anybody knows anything about Moon and Scorpio, let Jason know because uh, it could be one of those that he secretly needs and he doesn't know it. So we got Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hype with the great Oliver Reed. California Dreaming. Why does that sound so familiar? Oh, Glenn O'Connor. Okay. Seymour Kessel, Dennis, Dennis Christopher. Great cast. I think Dennis Christopher actually talked about California Dreaming on the uh, Faded Black Disc. There are some. Delta Force, man. Dave, there are some amazing titles here. Amazing titles. Like, go, let's go. There's the Delta, there's the Delta Force. And I love the way they got it done, like they're with the cast down below. Martin Balsam, Joy Bishop, Kim Delaney, Robert Forster, Lainey Kazan, George Kennedy, Hannah Shigala, Susan Strasberg, Bo Svensson, Robert Vaughn, Shelley, and Shelley Winters with Chuck Norris. And Lee Marvin in Delta Force. Yep, she is married to Gene Simmons. They did a whole TV series about that, didn't they? Like, uh, what's it called? Uh, Gene Simmons, whatever, Family Jewel. I can't remember now. I don't watch a lot of the, those type of stuff, but I know that my, I think my better half watched a bit of it. <clears throat> we got Johnny Cool with Henry Silva. Gotta love that. Now it can be told, the blood feud that makes America's underworld quake with terror. Headline, hot, the terror behind Casa Nostra. Casa Nostra. Freak it. The Brotherhood of Crime. Hey there, Jerry. Welcome, man. Everybody, welcome Jerry to the channel, by the way. The way that we always do. Don't make me get awkwardly silent again. Nice to have you in here. And hopefully this is the first of many times we see you here. We're looking right now at the Ronin Flick sale that's starting tomorrow, so we're getting a bit of a jump on it to see what some of the stuff out there that's coming out is. Next up is the Wicked Die Slow. And again, I don't think I know this one. A brand new Western in widescreen and color. Robert Vaughn used to visit your library? Oh man, I was so geeked out. And Griff's the first person to welcome him in, and and Griff, you get extra cool punch tonight. Oh, this is a 2019 film? Oh, no, 1968, 2019 remaster. Notorious Gunfire the Kid and his sidekick Armadillo sat their way through the post-Civil War West looking for the four drunken sadistic Indians who attacked the kid's girlfriend. See this long-lost, brutally adult Western in a new HD master, uncut and in scope. Wow, okay, never heard of this one. I don't think if I heard of it then I don't remember it. You guys are welcoming today and I really like that. Cool points for Matt, cool points for Dave. And Rith were twisted as well. <clears throat> Angel Unchained, Don Strode, Larry Bishop, Tyne Daly actually from uh what was it, Cagney Lacey, right? And she was in like a uh one of those, uh, what's what's the name? Uh, Dirty Harry films. Mask of the Red Death. <clears throat> Loving this cover. Edgar Allan Poe's Mask of the Red Death. Who's in this? Frank Stallone. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I'm loving this already. Edgar Allan Poe's <laughs> Mask of the Red Death with Frank Stallone, Brenda Vaccaro, Herbert Lom, audio commentary with Nathaniel Thompson, so you know that's good. <clears throat> I remember all this stuff here when you see 1999. 
<coughs> that's going to be thirty percent off <coughs> tomorrow. <coughs> there, my voice is going, guys. Pal, the escape behind enemy lines. The David Carradine film. I remember that one. Sword of the Valiant, Young Blood. That's the Lawrence Hilton Jacobs from uh, Welcome Back, Kata. Mr. Carter. Cold Heaven. Let's check out Cold Heaven. <clears throat> it's in a film made here. Oh, love them at Vaughn. Somewhere between life and death. Nicholas Rogue. Teresa Russell, Mark Harmon, James Russo, Will Patton. Great cast. <clears throat> yeah, Sly's brother, man. Frank Stallone. Small town in Texas. All Poke wanted was to get his girl and get out. All the sheriff wanted was to get Poke. Timothy Bottom, Susan, the great, beautiful Susan George. Bo Hopkins. New interview with Bo Hopkins on here as well. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Bo Hopkins is playing the sheriff. Because <laughs> it's a Bo Hopkins style role. <clears throat> Record City, love this artwork. Ed Begley Jr., Tim Thomerson, Rick Dees, uh, Frank Gorshin, Ruth Buzzy, Alice Ghostly, Larry Storch. Great cast. Man, there's way better stuff on. Like, I got some stuff there during a previous Ronin sale. <clears throat> but this, this is incredible. This is even better than stuff in their last sale. Bavarian Duke. Are you, are you serious, Senator K? That's cool. Air, airtight casting. Airtight casting for sure. Nana. I've seen Nana. I know I have. Um, Nana's the demon of Paris. Men lavish their wealth and attention on her. Katia Berger. Yeah, I, I've definitely seen this one. See this classic erotic film and cut in an HD. Very intriguing, actually. It's been ages since it. Blind Rage is here, which I think is now the yeah, Fred Williamson film. Happy Hooker Goes Hollywood. She conquered every producer's couch in town with <laughs> Martine Beswick as the Happy Hooker. Zan, what, Xavier, what, Xavier, Ho Xavier Holland, right? Um, Adam West, <laughs> Phil Silvers, Richard Deacon, Edie Adams, and Chris Lemon. A lot of cast, guys. Kind of want this, you know. I did like the Happy Hooker films, and I did read the Xavier, uh, ca like our, like things she did for uh, Playboy. I do have those of Ice Three. Actually, that's one that I do have. I got to get around to watching it. <laughs> the VHS. That is cool. Cycle Savages with Brewster and Chris Robinson and Melody Patterson. <clears throat> and Body and Soul. That's Leon Isaac Kennedy. I really like his stuff. Muhammad Ali. Nice. Peter Lawford. I've seen this one before, actually. Good film. <laughs> yeah. Tim Thomas. He just, you know, he, he's, he became jacked up. Okay, we got three more titles to look at here. First up is The Hotel Colonial with John Savage, Rachel, the beautiful Rachel Ward, Massimo Troisi, I probably mis mispronounced that, and Robert Duvall. I really like Robert Duvall. A, a new interview with John Savage on here, trailer, versatile cover art. Uh, let's see the other artwork. Yeah, I can see how they want to go with this one. Does he really? Because he is a singer. The Killing Box. But Corbin Burnson, Adrian Pazdar, and Martin Sheen. Got Cindy Williams. Not sure if it's the Cindy Williams or not. But because uh, it's if it is, it's, it's spelled wrong. And Billy Bob Thornton there as well. 
And last but definitely not least is uh, Tom Ber- Tom Berenger in La- Last Rites. So I remember this movie actually. Daphne Zuniga's in this one. I'm a really big Daphne Zuniga fan. See the alternate network. Ah, oh, I don't mind this alternate network because there we got the beautiful death Daphne Zuniga. I love this written though. Tom Berenger and Daphne Zuniga set the screen ablaze in this controversial tale of a love affair between a priest and a sexy woman. Not just any woman, guys. Not just any woman at all. But it's a sexy woman. A relentlessly entertaining tale of lust, betrayal, and revenge with a shocking final twist. Last rites and ministers equal measures of white knuckle suspense and white hot romance. A mafia hit. A vulnerable witness. A man of the cloth. The secret past. When Father Michael Pace finds himself drawn to the mistress of a brutally murdered mobster, he risks his life, his standing, and even his fate to protect her in this riveting thriller that will keep you guessing until the final frame. Donald Belisario? Really? Okay, cool. Uh, interview with uh, Donald Belisario, director of this one. Uh, he did uh, was it Magnum? Sh- shows, a lot of shows, anyway. This is going to be a killer sale. <clears throat> Like this, this is so good. There's like 43 titles there. <clears throat> well, last night Kubrick had insomnia. So I did because I've only slept an hour so far in the last uh, 48 hours. I literally came to work on hours of sleep this morning. <clears throat> but are there any dream titles for me here? I'm going to pick like a couple. Let's see how many. I'm going to go for each row. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the initiations of my favorite slashers, Jason. Oh, but I watch like movies like in morning, evening, or night. Last night I did watch, I did read the actually Last of Mohegan's, the comic that was in my uh, Marvel Classics, which is amazing. Oversized artwork. I, I don't think I can go back to anything. Be- but the oversized artwork after this. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one from each of these lines to uh, to go with. So there's five in each line. I'm gonna choose my favorite from each one. Sometimes it's gonna be easy, other times it's gonna be hard. But here we go. For, so the first line, I've already got Shredder and Lone Wolf McQuaid. This is gonna be li- and, and Robot Holocaust. Pretty easy, pretty easy fix for me because I've also got the mechanic, I think, on a, I'm pretty sure I got that from Twilight Time. So I'm gonna go with too Scared to Scream by Process of Eliminations. Let's go to the second one right there. You guys can give your your uh, your thoughts as well. This is a harder one. we got Gas Pump Girls, 315, Moment of Truth, uh, Act of Vengeance, otherwise known as, uh, was it Rape Squad? Um, Curse 3, Blood Sacrifice, and Death Wish 3. Man, th- those are some solid titles there. I'm up in the air. I'm like between like the mid three there. Do I want Curse 3 for Christopher Lee? Do I want... Gas Pump Girls, because it's just gonna. I know it's gonna be fun. Do I want three fifteen? The Moment of Truth. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna do a tie between Gas Pump Girls, and uh, and three fifteen. I think because I really saw. I like that movie when I was a kid. Maybe suck now, but I, when I was a kid, I loved it. Now, I do have Iron War. I'm pretty sure that I got that one. So it's an easy pick for Death Warrant with a follow up there of a Heavenly Kid. But still, Death Warrant gets the win on that one. Easy to give it to Night Visitor for me, though. Super intrigued what the hell Moon and Scorpio is. Love the cover. Don't know the film. John Philip Law, Britt Eklund, and William Smith. That's a solid cast. A veteran, his bride, his war buddies, and their wives are trapped on a yacht with war-related nightmares. Things get even more desperate when a killer on board starts to kill them one. But okay, wait a second. I like Tough Turf. Uh... I'm not quite sure if you're saying like you didn't like tough turf. You wonder if it's like better than tough turf, or if you or if you like tough turf and it's wondering if it's at, at that at that level. Uh, I I re- like it's been ages since I've seen it, Matthew. I'll be honest with you. Like when I say that I saw it, like I saw that when I was a kid. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. But when I did back then, I was you know I thought it was a bomb. But I was also that geeky kid that got picked on but it was also the geeky kid that wouldn't let it wouldn't let anybody else get picked on that was pretty much me like if someone was picking on me i didn't give a crap 
uh, you know. But if I saw somebody picking on somebody else, then I then I stood up. Moon and Scorpio is getting the win on this one. I want Night Visitor, but Moon and Scorpio that just sounds too good. And what a sexy cover! I'd say it'd be similar, like because you got the guy Adam Baldwin, of course. He had done, I think at that point, he had he'd already done My Bodyguard with Chris Makepeace, which was a big film. Uh, and again, it, he played a lot of those type of roles. Oh, Spheres with Men's Sect in the Church. Those are good titles, man. So right here, oh, this is a hard one. But I'm going to go with Opposing Force just because she looks so sexy. But uh, California Dream is really, was really, really on my Obviously, I really can't get these, but we're going like that I can. If I had unlimited funds. This one here is, I'm going to go with Mask of the Red Death, but Wicked Die Slow. Really, really interesting plot. Again, going with Cold Heaven, but A Small Town in Texas sounds incredible too. Sword of the Variant, such a fun film. Right here, I'm gonna go with Happy Hooker. Uh, actually, I'm gonna. It's a tie between Happy Hooker and Nana. It's this one should be easy. It's only got three titles here, uh, and this one I'll go with the Last Rites. <clears throat> Was the Phantom Moon Scorpio? Is that have a good mystery? Is it like is it sleazy got zombies? <laughs> you know that I I don't mind the sleazy stuff. <clears throat> But yeah, th thank you. I'm not sure. If, I don't think Master Cast is here right now, but Master Cast, like, let me know about this here. And so I'm going to say right now, yeah, thank you, Master Cast. Check out his channel, by the way. He, him and Brian did some really cool unboxings today. Some, some, uh, so check out Master Cast TV. Uh, check out Just the Discs because he both did, like, uh, unboxings for the new, like, uh, Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Master Cass had his had his wife on with him. I love when he got his better half there, because uh, they play off each other so well. Three disc opera, oh, incredible release. So let's just take a look at the website itself. Like we've seen the sale, let's see what some of the other stuff that they got are. There you see coming in March sixteenth, Adrenaline, with Christopher Lambert, and Lawnmower Two. Probably better than Lawnmower One. They're Ultra 4K. Look at these. Look at these sexy releases. Wow. And now available two MGM cult classic releases from Scorpion. Who will stop the rain and voyage into space. I love voyage into space. Actually, it's cool. Spring sale. And they got some stuff on. That they're not on sale, but like some really cool titles here. Civil Danning and LA Bounty. Of course, that's got Wings Hauser, so you know that's got to be fun, right? Um... Devil Times Fives at the Forest. Uh, just don't expect it to be like a good film. Expect it to be a fun film. He wouldn't give it a three out of ten if it's sleezed up. <laughs> okay, well maybe we'll, I'll wait on that one then. Uh, Devil's Wedding Night. Erica Blanc. Can't go wrong with Erica Blanc, man. Pretty sure it's Erica Blanc in this one. Now, Rosabella Neri, oh, even better. Yeah. I love Rosabella Neri. So we got Mark Damon, Rosabella Neri, my one of my dad's favorites actually. Uh, speaking, of which I should let him know. That uh that's uh Ronan Flick sale starting tomorrow. This, they got some cool stuff here. Photographed by Joe D'Amato. Oh, now these are the ones that are too expensive to get. 
but I would love, I would kill to have these releases. I really, really want this. I spit on your grave release. Look how sexy this is. Like, look at that. That's like sexy box set. Get I spit on your grave. Day of the woman. What's the alternate artwork? And you get I spread on your grave deja vu, which is also a film. And you get a documentary on the making of the film there. Two collectible posters, two replica VHS box style magnets, newly commissioned 44 page book uh, featuring historical photos, linear notes by writers uh, Michael Gingold and Megan Navarro. I'd kill to have this one. Same with Hot. Like Hot, they put out a really good dish to Hot too. Is this the one? No, there's a big edition. Of, I'm not sure if this is the one or not. But there's a big edition with like, uh, with like posters and everything. <laughs> My your phone froze when I went silent while on the website. He's not allowed to shut up. God, it's horrible. Uh, I don't even know what that was. Uh, okay, so found the operas there, card player, the church, not not on sale, but Lena twenty eight ninety nine for the church isn't a bad price for the limb edition. Same with the sect for twenty two nine nine. That's not bad, guys. You don't get thirty percent off. It is, man. Like Jason, like you, you know, the situation I'm at right now. Uh, I would kill for some of that stuff. I should enjoy it, Hunt, yeah. Assignment tears of another Paul Nashi one. If you're grabbing your Paul Nashi stuff, then uh, no, this is Nashi right here. As you can tell by the wear up there. There's like a sci fi type feel to that one, but if you're collecting Nashi, it should be in your collection. I want to check a Death Warrant. There's Fear of the Wolfman right there. So, Death Warrant, that's going to be in sale tomorrow. New 2K scan, audio commentary with Duran, Seraphin, uh, probably mispronounced that. New interview with actor Patrick Kilpatrick and Art Lefleur. Art Lefleur. Uh, so, really cool stuff there. Terror Train. I got the original, like, Terror Train edition that came out from Scream Factory. Is this a better edition? Because I love the movie Terror Train. Fear the Wolfman, I would kill for this one. Paul Nashi. Two, two cuts of the film, auto commentary. Uh, actually, it looks like two auto commentaries with the film. Love the way they do these. Just such good stuff here. So many titles here that I'd love to have. I gotta thank Jason again for like knocking a, knocking the title off of the list that I, that I really wanted. So, so that's one that I don't <laughs> have to pick up down the road here. Oh yeah, that's right. He's in Killer. I like the Killers One of Thirteen. What do you think? I know it's a little bit slower than like some of the other ones. It's a little, it's a little bit atypical of some of the what you expect for a Jello. But I thought it was a pretty good, like, like Agatha Christie esque, -esque like, uh, film. I really liked it. Hopefully, I might be able to get like the, the Jello box set until like, uh, until the sale. But when I do, like, even though I know everybody's unboxing it right now, I'll still do the unboxing stuff. I'll be doing like for those that are on my uh, my Patreon, which is the you know live movie club. Um, then uh, I will be doing a uh, Shutter Streaming Wars video in the near future. So look forward to that. And as you guys know, there's a couple like Patreon exclusive only videos that will be live on the channel to look at for this week only. Uh, I'm going to try and intrigue you guys into actually checking out the Patreon if you haven't already.
I'm very excited to be on, be on the door edition, man. Like that, that is incredible. I that was very, very amazing of you. But I got a couple of the other titles over there. I think right, right over there actually. If I, I if I did bring them upstairs. If I got them over there, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll show them to you. Yeah, it was cool. I had a really good one. Yeah, not the whole site lands. Uh, basically, it's like over 40, it's around 43 titles altogether, right? Uh, but it's a good mixture of titles. Definitely enough there for you to like to get to get a couple out of. For sure. I mean, like, uh, there's some definitely cool horror and action titles there. Let me just check something for you guys. On the last sale, I picked up a few of the uh, Ron Flix titles, so I'll, I'll just give you guys a look because some of them are on the sale now. <laughs> One of them I didn't know I had actually. Uh, <laughs> so there is Bucktown right there, Fred Williamson, Pam Greer, Bernie Hampton, Tony King. Who does not love the beautiful Pam Greer? There is one my better half picked up, and I forgot it. It was Beast with a Million Eyes. Another one I forgot we got was Iron Warrior. I understand, Lance. I really do. I won't be able to join into the fun this time either. Jason got me covered though with, with some cool stuff, so I lucked out that way. Uh, Lone Wolf McQuaid. There's the set. There's the one for Lone Wolf McQuaid. Actually, it looks really cool. A lot of features on that one too, by the way. Robot Holocaust. I think this is one of the ones that a poster. So let me just check. Because this one is on sale. Yep. Yeah, so. Much like the Rituals poster that was given to me by uh, by Jason. I so need to get that film. There's the poster for Robot Holocaust. I'm looking at Cast, by the way. Which is a program you can watch, uh, watch films with people. So I am... I obviously can't do it here on YouTube. Uh, but I'm thinking of like on my Patreon channel, doing a uh, a movie watch with uh, with with my patrons. So if that's something that you're interested in, let me know what you think, and I can look into it. And there is these are two that aren't on the sale, but really good ones. Which is Found in the Opera, which is of course Dario Argento with uh, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Azia Argento. And of course, there is another Argento film right there, which is Sleepless. Got Lone Wolf McQuaid for free. That's the best way to get him out. Good film. And good price. Uh, but yeah, these are some of the type of titles that you'll see there. I'm watching Beyond the Door tonight, I think. Yeah, Beyond the Door or Glass. I'm going back and forth. So yeah, like... Uh, I thought it'd be fun. I'll pick something kind of fun and ch cheesy and that we can watch together. I'll cast with a K. So I'm looking into it. So as soon as I can figure it out. Hey there, Alvin. Welcome. Yeah, I got some amazing stuff from like uh, from Jason today. So definitely nine titles, by the way. Have I seen Mel? I I'm way behind on Mel Gibson's films. <laughs> I don't even know what boss level is. Uh, but I'm guessing... It's Mel Gibson with a big beer. <laughs> I'm working on the Zoom call, Matthew. I, I just don't have figured out how to do it yet. Oh. 
there you go. And I think you're right. It's better having the the words on this side of the screen so you can actually see my see my ever loving face. If I thought about making the Discord channel, I haven't really thought about it actually. I know very little about it. I'm so not the best when it comes to the uh, some of the computery stuff, but I'm actually working on it. Um, Discord channel people have asked for that one, so there's going to be a Discord server, a Patreon exclusive Discord server, and I'll be doing something with the. Uh, I want to do a cast, so basically, well, I'm I'm just want to find the right film, something fun and cheesy we can all watch together. So yeah, there's some big stuff coming up on Patreon. A few of you guys still have not watched my Stream Wars video, which I'm surprised. I put a ton of work into that one. That's going to go, that's going to be coming on here tonight, by the way. So I did a video called Stream Wars, and I and it started out just like an overview of Disney Plus and talking about like the history, talking about the streaming, and and basically where I'm going to go with, with that uh, series of videos. So you'll see that coming up. Prophecy? You think Prophecy is a good idea? Prophecy is a good film. There's a few different things that I wanted to try. One of the places that I was going to try, I was going to make like a little, like it was like a, a site, like kind of a, you could like different creators can make sites and people could come on and have a little like, like characters type uh, on there, but they, it closed down anyway. It didn't, it didn't work out. I think I think Dr. Wifley was on it. Not Discord, different one. <clears throat> I will definitely let you know. I'll probably watch Glass first. I'm thinking the sleaze level is going to be high in Glass, so I'm kind of liking that. <laughs> Considering the cover. Um, But if the cast thing works out, then we'll definitely do more of those. I think some other YouTubers have done cast. I'm pr I think Michael's done it. I should reach out to Michael and ask him, actually. Yeah, I just literally got this, the, uh, the thing from uh, Ronan Flicks. Part two, I better have torture her. <laughs> Don't miss Ra tonight. Uh, I think I will. Class is insane. <laughs> oh, good. I like that. Now, to be honest with you, tonight, what I'm probably going to do after this video is pass out gonna try to buy a ps5 tomorrow dude where are you getting the ps5 at good luck by the way if you get it let me know man because that's a pretty baller move my back is so stiff tonight jody foster movies right like older stuff little girl lives down the lane one of my favorites that's an early one. She's like young in that, but again, wanna still stands the test of time. Really creepy Martin Sheen that film, by the way. Talia Shire, she's so good. She really is. Your girlfriend got a pit. Your girlfriend rocks, man. <clears throat> PS5s are cool. Anybody else want like five minutes with a bat in a room with a scalper? <laughs> or is that just me? That's just my thing. It's a really good. Don't like look at anything before you uh, before you watch it. Like go in blind. But it's a really good film, starring Jodie Foster, young Jodie Foster, buying from Target. Okay, cool.
Oh yeah, error video. Actually, I talked about it a couple days ago. What's my favorite Ronin release that I one that I got? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Beyond Door is definitely up there. Uh, that's for sure. In all honesty, but I like the ones that I got already. I'm a big fan of Sleepless. I like Sleepless. I got the one disc edition of the church, I think. No, 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 the sect. I got the one disc edition of the sect downstairs. So it's not a Ronin one, but it's like, uh, you know, I think a Scorpion. Sometimes I quote movies on stream. I've noticed, man. That is cool. Curious when Severn will ship the Milligan set. I'm guessing it'll be fairly soon. I don't have the set ordered or anything like that, so... Uh, not one that I got. I did want, like I wanted it, but I came to a point where, uh, like, I couldn't choose everything, and I didn't want the hat. It's it's silly, I know, but if I was going to get something like a million sets, like a big set like that, I want the I want the big edition, and I think at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. If I couldn't buy the big package with the book and all that type of stuff, and I understand, I completely understand why. Like, just to let you know, I understand why. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a skater shirt. So I still wear. A, yeah, I'm hitting fifty, but I still wear my. I still have my skater shirts that I wear every once in a while because I, I well I skateboarded when I was younger. See, the Milligan set would have been good if they would have said if that it would have been like any other time and. They would have had the book and all that there, the big set, and they said, "Okay, look, there's so many of these. It's super expensive, but you can buy it." I would have bought it. I would have bought like the that edition. But uh, just the set on its own, I did. I did. It didn't hit me right. And I know it's a small thing, and I know I could go in and buy the thing separately, and I could go on Amazon and and buy the book itself, right? But that takes away from that kind of that special feel that you get when you buy a bundle, and maybe maybe it's just me, and and it probably is just me, really, when you th when I think about it. But uh, yeah, and it's nothing against Severin; it's a bad time for it right now. <clears throat> Try refreshing uh, Kubrick. Do I think Edge would beat Roman Reigns at, at WrestleMania? I'm not invested in WrestleMania, but uh, no. I think it's a mistake to have Roman Reigns be beaten at WrestleMania. To be bluntly honest with you, I, I don't think I think he should carry this a bit longer. Uh, if they do, then that means they're going to set up for an Edge Randy Orton, and nobody wants to see that. And <laughs> you think it's because of price? <clears throat> Understandable. But for me, you guys know, like uh, you've seen like the books that I've, um, I've that I've shown on here, whether it's like the uh, the Stephen Thor books or the omnibuses. I'm a huge, uh, huge fan of uh, of like the the big oversized like coffee table books. That's that's massively important to me. At this point, there's not a, a lot of like build up to WrestleMania that that's got me excited because I think we're getting like a Drew Bobby Lashley at, at WrestleMania and I'm like okay uh, that's interesting <clears throat> but uh yeah I don't have a lot of really like oh he went <laughs> he did not he, did, he went last night Judith um, he showed up <clears throat> uh, three wrestlers showed up like uh, in uh, AW Revolution last night uh, Christian Cage which was the big signing and uh, Ethan Page of course the uh, Ultimate Eagle and uh, Makia Maki Atoa as well. 
Oh, Triple H is going to be running WWE, so he's, he's safe for his out. And uh, honestly, it'll be better once Triple H runs it. I'm sure Bruce Pritchard will be sucking up Triple H to that point. But I get this bad feeling that if like something ever happened to Vince, like Bruce has been uh, like there for so long that like Vince would try and hand it off to Bruce, and that would be the end of WWE. But yeah, it was overall a great pay-per-view last night. See, we don't really need, for, like, after... It's like a pay-per-view that we don't really need. Ah, uh, that'll do it, man. If you're uploading at the same time. <clears throat> I don't think there's anybody that's going to say, yeah, well, I'm excited about this. How do you feel about WrestleMania being a two-day event? It's okay. Uh, my better half likes it better than I do. Um, this is the second year's a two-day event, so I'm kind of getting used to it. It would be better if there was better builds. Here's the thing. Uh, whether it's a two-day event or a, uh, a one-day event, uh, then it's going to... Oh, man, that was a horrible match. <laughs> Triple H's thing was a horrible match. That was so badly booked. Uh, <clears throat> hey there, Antoine. Yeah, I mean, like, when they decided... When Vince said, you know, I want to, I want us to beat friends in the ratings. Like, yeah, no. Uh, and then he hired a bunch of, like, actual writers. Like, big, big mistake. AEW's doing it right. They're letting a lot of the wrestlers kind of book their own stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, with to a certain extent, to a certain degree. Because they have faith in the wrestlers to get over. And to know what, what, what gets them over. That's a... Uh, and there were some good matches last night. I even I even didn't mind the the Miro like the squash match with Miro. Because you need to get him over as a monster heel. I was I remember I was going through like Twitter uh, during the pay per view, and when Ethan Page came out, which you know some people didn't know who Ethan Page was, uh, <clears throat> and uh, they're like, oh my god, that's your. That's your amazing signing. That's your that's your big signing, and they're like you know aw like WWE trolls. Uh, one, I, I'm sorry you don't know Ethan Pages, uh, or and two, that wasn't the big signing. It was Christian, and Christian was a huge signing. That's the biggest. There's the key. They are taking the time to build the characters, so you get somebody that comes in like a super comedy type character, like Orange Cassidy. His first appearance was anything, but but impressive. Uh, you know, it was it was pretty lax. He came in like as a in the uh, in in the battle royal that the first battle royal that they had, and they slowly built him and they built us they built like built him up there. He started getting over. Hey there, Ash, and welcome, man. Thank you so much. Ashen is the most consistent one on here when it comes to. Uh, to the super chats and the and the, and the ultra chats, so thank you, Ash. I really appreciate that, man. Character building is key. Did it scare you guys? I hope it did. I hope it scared some of you guys into knowing that ye have not donated to this channel in a long time. <clears throat> Jason's donated. Ashen's donated. Just saying. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good cinema attack. How are you, man? Check out the beginning of this video early on because I unboxed some truly incredible stuff tonight. Sami Zayn is so good. I mean, like... No matter what crap they give him, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, I love John Moxley. And I'm a really big fan of him. Uh, even when his Dean Ambrose stuff, and it got really silly, like, he was still good. Like, he was still good. He, he couldn't didn't do the matches he wanted to do, but he was still so good. 
The late great Brody Lee, of course, was incredible in, in AEW. Just really got over. When you think about like what what was done, it's it just blows my mind. Hangman was a slow build, such a nice build too. Even to like the Matt Hardy match that they did, they're like, can you really get over in like this little kind of mini food Matt Hardy? <laughs> well, every Chainsaw Massacre film really has ne they've never really been like a sequel to the to the last film. The main event was good, but it, obviously it was, you know, the ending with the uh, the explosion, quote unquote. Uh, it's so hard when it comes to doing one of those type matches because it can go one of two ways. It can be like a fizzle, which happened. Uh, the match was good right up to the end, but the end definitely took the window of the sales of that last match. Yeah, it is, I like the fact that they're doing it. Tony Khan's a nice guy. And the fact that this is the company that's working with N NJ and New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's working with Impact Wrestling, uh, it, it's just amazing the stuff that they do. Yeah, Zane, Zane and Brian and Daniel Bryan, they, they just they're good whatever they do. Same with uh, Kevin Owens. <clears throat> All three of those guys, like they should they should be like the the radicals back. Anybody remember the radicals? Uh, back in the days of WCW, uh, one night. After a pay per view, uh, like a bunch of the people said, like we're really we're really pissed off. Hey there, Zach. Thank you, man. <laughs> I love this. that sticker. Uh, I love the dancing stuff. Uh, was it a storyline choice, really? <clears throat> That'll be interesting to check out. AEW does some brilliant stuff. Like well, you can't, you, you I mean, like even if you don't, uh, you don't watch much wrestling, you gotta like appreciate the stuff that they do. I do remember Chris Masters. No, he had the the Master Lock, right? That was that was. See, I got a uh, a PSP that my mom got me la last year uh, when I was in uh, in Cornerbrook, and the one game that I planned, I got a bunch of games for the PSP. I only play one, and. Uh, it's uh and it's like the uh ww2 2006 benoit eddie saturn malenko that's the radicals perfect zombie good good call there so yeah so basically in wcw backstage i think it was russo i think it was russo that said hey anybody wants to leave they can take their release right now so the biggest guys in the wcw at the time chris benoit eddie guerrero harry saturn Dean Malenko. Yeah, the biggest guys on if you've been watching wrestling at the time, I know like things didn't work out with Chris Benoit, obviously. But um it did for a while until he went, you know. But um they sh literally showed up on WC on WWE te television. Uh and it was quite the quite the uh the shocker. Cena what well, Cena's Cena is like an actor, and he'll go back to get a check in WWE run, so I don't expect him going anywhere else. I know some people thought because he was doing a show on TBS that he might go over there, but, you know, and he could in the future, but not right now. And Brock, I think Brock would be a waste. Brock would be one of those you'd pay a ton of money for. Uh, you would, you know, definitely get eyes, you would get eyes on, on this thing, but you got to have somebody that's not just going to get eyes on your on your show but it's gonna like consistently you know get you know ha can can really pay it forward um brock isn't paying it forward like very rarely brock's all brock's about brock i don't oh, don't and i do not like don't think i'm ragging on him because if you can do that uh you can be what are we doing hawkamania runs wild well mean gene <laughs> the cruiserweight division like really really kept the uh WCW going sort of doing some hard times i don't think he should go back to ufc i don't think he that uh i think it, it's beyond him right now I, i'll be honest with you brock's a beast of a man but i think at it right now it would hurt uh, i'm not gonna lie to you, Ragman. i was a huge chris benoit fan so 
to say that I was hurt when uh, now obviously I was hurt. It's like Chris Benoit's you know, family and stuff was, but that it hurt me to see what happened with Chris Benoit, big time, like big time. I was a huge Chris Benoit fan, and I, w- I was to the point where like you know this is horrible, but his his work is great, and I can still watch his matches. I, I can just like like disassociate myself. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I've, I've tried and I can't and it's hard and it hurts. Um, oh yeah, 100%. Like I said, Brock's doing Brock. But that I don't think that's that would work for uh, for AEW uh, right now. Um, I mean, they have guys there. They, they've got big, some big guys there. Call of Wrestling. We're the call of everything. I've done call of comic collecting, call of wrestling, call of cinema. <laughs> I need my leather jacket for that. Uh, <clears throat> for those that don't know, it's the Raven thing. Hey there, Alan. Here's the thing. When we're in here and we're live, we're talking conversation, stuff like that. Uh, you guys always sway the way the conversation goes. You, you guys do. So you, ha- you have that power. So this isn't, I'm not just like the, I'm not like the circus, like uh, the ringmaster type thing. Uh, this is a pretty even keel when it comes to uh, to the conversations on here. Christian versus Mag would be cool. Christian versus Hangman would be cool, man. <laughs> well, they're kind of retired now. Uh, what is a mortician? Doing an AEW. Like, you give Brock enough money, to do it, he'll do it. But <laughs> but Brock is all about, Brock is definitely all about, like, the persona of Brock Lesnar. And, and you know, definitely. Like, but you, you got to remember that Brock got that persona by a bunch of people when Brock was young selling for Brock. I don't know. Uh, you're cool, man. That's what some of them have to remember. Like, even when you get up to that spot and you're like, "Okay, I got this persona. I've got this like this aspect that I want. I really that I really want to talk about." But at the end of the day, man, you got to remember that somebody sold for you to to get where you are. And you pay it forward. Do you remember the plan, Benoit? I do, actually. To make it like Americans. Holy crap. Yeah, let's not make that film. Isn't there like a... I'm pretty sure there's a Vince McMahon biopic coming out. I, I gotta see that. It's gonna be horrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have like Bradley Cooper or someone on it. Oh, I would love Conor McGregor. Uh, that guy's... That, that's, there's a talker, man. Uh... He knows how to work a crowd. Like if you're a UK or you're Irish, then uh, you know you're basically you know just like you know I'm I'm from Newfoundland, and we have we got lots of common. So anybody that's UK or Irish or anything like you know, if you're from uh, any of those places, uh, yeah, you're you're like us Newfoundlanders in a in a certain way. And that's why my apple whiskey's out there, which I'm probably going to have later on. <clears throat> but I, I really like Conor McGregor. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it was not a good not a good sell for the Benoit film. Though the Vince McMahon film should be hilarious. I'm so looking forward to that. That's going to be such a puff piece. Vince, you rescued you rescued all those AW wrestlers by bringing them over to the WWF. Thank God you did that. Yeah. See, because some people still get along the lines of look, AW picked up a wrestler that used to be in another company, whether it be WWE or ROH or something. Well, look at them picking up wrestlers from other companies. Well, that's how it works. <laughs> WWF, they're wrestlers. They're big wrestlers. They didn't come from WWF. 
they've come. They, they came from AW and like NWA and places like that. That's where they came from. Welcome back here, Rick. You missed out on the wrestling stuff. I know you're 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 tragically disappointed. Vince Films produced by WWE Studios. <laughs> That's gonna be hilarious. Do I think they're built into a Darby Allen Sting feud? I don't think they're gonna go that way. Uh, be interesting, but uh, I th I didn't see the Darby Allen Sting match last night. I'm gonna check it out today, actually. I was working on some stuff for the channel. I could see a Darby Allen Sting feud going. Uh, if only to f for you know sting to sell to uh to to Allen, to uh you know kind of bring over Allen. Well, Allen's like get, is definitely one of those guys that I never thought would get over, and uh, like he got over tremendously. I know it, it's crazy, Jason. I mean, like people, and that, that's 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 like a con that's an online comment that you hear all the time. Well, I can't believe you got the wrestler from yeah. Brad, I can't believe Bradley Cooper agreed to that. They must have like shoved a ton of mo money on under Bradley Cooper for that. I wonder if Bradley Cooper's going to do Vince's walk. Is he going to do the, <laughs> the Vince walk? Exactly. A lot of them came from WCW. Um, like even the guys say, well, this this guy was made in like Shawn Michaels. He's a WWE guy. He was made in WWE. No, he wasn't. Shawn Michaels was part of the Rockers, and the Rockers was AEW. It was Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, and they came over to the WWF later on. And they got kicked out of the WF like pretty quickly and would come back again later. Flash indicator. Is that so? That's what that is. So it's a flash indicator sale, guys. It will be so sometime this week. I might be doing a few more like live videos than normal. <laughs> but, uh, it'd be interesting. I mean, like, I don't think Sting's going to do a lot of matches. I'll do a few every once in a while. Make them event things. Yeah, they 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 screwed over Sting and in in, uh, in WWE. Uh, it was a good match up to the end, Zach man. So uh, the big explosion didn't come out the way it's supposed to. But some people are saying now they're saying that there's that was for a reason. So uh, I gotta look check that out. New MVD Rewind Collection announcement. Which one, Antoine? The last one I saw was the Go-Go Boys. What's, uh, what's been announced since then? No, not Bret Hart. I like Bret Hart. He's, he's a good wrestler. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, for years, like, Raven was one of my, was one of my favorites. I, was, I really liked Raven's character. Especially ECW Raven. So that's, you know, it's not, not too bad. And I loved Raven as Johnny Polo before he became Raven. There's that mind, about the Raven mind at work, by the way. Uh, in, the, in that he takes this kind of rich jerky John, Johnny Polo character and takes him and brings him over are you serious Mortuary and House on Sorority Row holy sh okay let's check that out uh, let me see if I can find it here guys Okay, that mortuary. Like, I got extra excited for a second. Because <laughs> uh, the mortuary I was thinking of was not the Tobe Hooper one. Uh, let's see what else we got here. House and Sorority Row, really? Even if it's the new host on Sorority Row, I'm still down with that. I love that, the new host on Sorority Row. Well, 
Like a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was fun. I love that he like you know kind of accidentally kills the girl. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, now think about it, zombie. Remember Johnny Polo's character, right? He's this rich, you know, obnoxious character. And then you get Raven. And Raven's this, like, rebellious, emo, rich kid. So Johnny Polo kind of metamorphosized into, like, the whole Raven character. But it's still the same character. It's just he, he you know, he's rebelling now. And he's this, he's this darker character. It, it, it's so well done. Let's find out. I want to check on the sorority row one. Oh, that looks like the original mortuary. That is freaking amazing if it is. Holy crap. So let me bring it up here to show you guys. Not there. So as you can see, there's uh, of course drive we knew about, action you say we knew about, go go buys I knew about, but Mo house on sorority row it looks like the original house on sorority row, and the original mortuary. He did manage out bomb, I think. You're seeing me from the computer right now, actually. I know the quality is not as good as my iPad, but uh, in order to do all these things here to get, let, make sure you guys can see like the the websites and to do the other things that I do on here now, I, that's what I that's what I have to do. And eventually, I'll get a uh, I'll get a new web camera. And I may actually do like an ultra chat type thing where I'm just going to be doing like a chat, basically, and saying, okay, you know, it's, I'm going to be doing a chat, like help me out, help me. Get, get the bones for a web camera at some point I'll do something like that yeah I'm excited about this so we got Mortuary here love that cover uh, love that cover House on Sorority Row I've only got a DVD of that one I'd love to upgrade that one so we're going to have the behind the scenes alternate artworks stuff like that Yeah, this is this is incredible. Thanks, man. I I didn't know, <clears throat> Antoine. So, I, I'm very very impressed with this. Those are two titles. Those are high on my list. Mortuary and, and House and Sorority Row. Oh, thanks, Rukubik. You know, I I I know that sometimes the quality is not as good, so I do get I do get a little self conscious about that sometimes. So. But thank you. Also, the one shilling time that I, that I do, I guess once per video now, is for those that don't know, for those that are interested, there is the Cotlo Cinema Merchandise Store. Uh, the merch store has right now, it, it has the face mask, the three t-shirts, the Futures Franco, the Cotlo Cinema Movie Library shirt, and the Cotlo Cinema Approved t-shirt, and the Cotlo Cinema Approved mug as well. There will be a cap coming up in the near future and a hoodie as well. So keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in Cotton Cinema merchandise, you get a special bonus when you buy something. You get to choose a video that I do in the future. So keep an eye out for that. And there will be some sales coming up down the road uh, for for certain people. And there may be special coupons that will come for people that have already bought something in the Cotton Cinema uh, site and you guys may get a coupon first if you know you never know if you want a different t-shirt or a mug or something else more stuff is coming up on the website so check that out i like snapdragon actually i love jason you know me <laughs> i have an autographed picture of pam anderson here in my house <laughs> so uh you you know i don't have a, don't have snapdragon yet but it's one i really want if snapdragon's what i'm thinking about that i'm malcolm mcdowell right Pretty sure it did. Let me just check here. 
I think this is the MVD visual one though, not MVD rewind. I don't see him bow. I don't see him bears on him. I thought for sure that Malcolm McDowell. I guess I'm I'm getting it wrong. Look, there I'm getting names wrong all over the place now, guys. But I do remember seeing Bauer in it. Matt McCoy was in that one as well. Nice. Oh, I know what I'm thinking of. There's like a an art one that's Malcolm McDowell I'm thinking of. <laughs> in Tree Topper. I know they don't make that unfortunately, but if they do <clears throat> I would totally get that. Cannabis made a response. It is it's neat that they made a response. Like it's you know, it's more of a puffy one, but still it's it's fun to have. Go go buzz is definitely one to get. Just make sure you got the cannon one as well to uh to offset. Hey there dungeon. I thought you left us there. Jamie, you were so quiet. I don't see my kids would know that. Keep <laughs> I do not know that. I haven't. Uh, well, I've seen it. Yeah, years ago, man. Uh, now my problem with talking about the fear is I saw both of them. Like, there's two of them, and I kind of I they blend together for me. I did like it when I saw it though. Uh, I know it's not like a an everybody type of thing but I thought it was a fun one overall I mean like it's you know it's fun it's cheesy it's kind of low budget like I don't have the uh, that package it's a package I wanted to get for my birthday but then I ended up getting a lot of the uh, the omnibuses and stuff so I haven't really gotten like as far as I as far as I know uh, like the only movies that I'm getting for my birthday this year are are from uh from you guys so like the people like jason sent me movies here tonight uh and i got some come from ashen actually uh that uh should be here probably tomorrow or the next day uh so i'll have another unboxing to, to do for you guys so uh, you'll see some more stuff so basically any movies that i get for my birthday are, are more than likely going to be coming from like viewers like you like PBS would say, right? PBS, you can support PBS. Because uh, we survive with for, thanks to viewers like you. And now would you like to spend $75 for a disappearing TARDIS mug? Oh, yeah, that, that that is the new stuff. I mean, like the Go Go Boys, Dungeon Studio. I have, Mortuary is coming out, man. Uh, 1984's Mortuary is coming out. The 1982 classic, The House of on Sorority Row. Uh, incredible little film there. Radio Silence. <laughs> yeah, they knew what they were doing, man. As soon as they heard. As soon as they heard. But this is Golan Globus. These, that is what they do, man. Electric Boogaloo is a better film. <laughs> it really is. But Go Go Buzz is a fun film. It's one to watch. So it's like it's like the bonus feature <laughs> after Electric Boogaloo. I was going to get the Mono Macabre Limited Editions on Thursday. Unfortunately, John, I don't get paid till Friday. <clears throat> and that could be the issue. I really want them. Like, I really want them. But, uh... Like we were gonna get the pay per view last night, we ended up like not being able to get it and watch it through like a tote bag. I'm not sure if they do tote bags, but I'll check that. Actually, that's a good idea. That's a really good day, actually, Kubrick. Shop the call. Hats. Hope yeah. That that's. I would definitely look into that. For those that have seen, have looked at the uh, the website and looked at the merch stuff and see some something if there's a design or something like that you like or you're like let me know because those i can use over curious just stop a package of howling wolf records oh nice your storm morning score are you serious that is incredible man they sent you their entire cd catalog 46 soundtrack cds that is amazing 
You know what I love, Jamie? That like you're on here when when you're dropping this stuff. Uh, I got your message, by the way. Um, so uh, I was gonna write you tonight, but I will say when it comes to like this, we could do the upcoming one. But the only problem is that I don't want it to be at a time when you fear you're gonna be rushed. Uh, I don't want you to be thinking, oh man, I, I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta go to do this, and like I don't want to be, be. So, we'll do it on your uh, on your on your time schedule. That's the best way to do it. You're doing storm warning. So there you go, guys. So, so Howling Wolf Records, if you haven't checked them out, are doing storm warning and and long weekend. So let us go to Howling Wolf Records. Let's do that. Perhaps if I spell it right. So you see they're selling a daily night one. So let's see some of the recent releases. Let's see if we can find it here. Oh, they have some cool stuff here, man. Oh, that's Boogie Man. Does anybody review this stuff? Uh, WandaVision, you were such a good show. Don't have yours up there yet, man. Hope we'll be able to see it there soon. So let's check the CD store, see if it's there. There's some really good stuff here, man. You got all of these? Shockwaves. Uli Lama's The Boogeyman soundtrack. Solid Night, one of the better remakes I've seen in a long freaking time. Bereavements here, dude. I am super jealous of you, Jamie. Uh, Midnight, malevolence, suddenly bloody night. Got him talent. It's trying to find you back in twenty eleven. To release storm warning, so it worked out. That's awesome. We got a record, like a CD company here too, Death Bomb. I don't think he's here right now. Is that the beginning of the video? Uh, Death Bomb does like uh, does some some really cool stuff, um, which you should definitely check out. By the way, but there they have some amazing soundtracks we're looking at here. Actually, I met the cast of Jacob. He met the guy that played Jacob. Better watch out with one of those surprises. Twitter's an amazing place to find people, Jamie. It really is. I gotta reach out more. Because I have a feeling that if I actually like was like contacted the right people and reached out more, you would definitely guys see more unboxings on this channel and uh, and, and more reviews. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm like I'm waiting for stuff from uh, from Mill Creek Entertainment and, and Umbrella Entertainment as well. So there's two companies that uh, Umbrella is probably going to take a while because it's come from Australia. But as soon as I get the stuff, it'll be unboxed, it'll be reviewed, everything, and uh, we'll we'll make some real. There'll even be a live video done talking about it. Are they using like the original? I'm guessing. I'm gonna guess, Jamie, that they're not using the uh, that other 
long we can cover <laughs> from nature's grave. But open to release some concept album stuff. Keep me up. In I know that you do scores and stuff, so definitely keep me on like up to date with uh, with Howlin' Wolf. I, because I'll gladly show off their their stuff here on the channel, including like the, uh, the their website. Like guys, if you're interested in in soundtracks, there's some really good stuff here. Like they get like a solid a Deadly Night two CD set. They get like shock. They get like the uh, the Shockwaves one. They get like Storm Warning and Long Weekend. They get those soundtracks in there. Gets to get the Malevolent series. Some great stuff here. Some really great stuff. Well, put. let's let's go to one of them. Them actually. See, see, can we get go to them? Audio samples and information. I want to get the audio sample come up. So let's just see if we get information. So there you go. And like CDs too. Like. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Jamie, I just had to say it once. But there you can see, like, there's shockwaves right there. Music composed by Richard Einhorn. 12 page booklet. Uh, Score has been remastered from the composer's personal 7.5. Oh, nice. Uh, master tapes, too. Uh, great stuff. The Prowler. I gotta look for that guy on Twitter. How long with records? Just in case you guys wonder what I'm doing right now, I'm actually really looking them up. There we go. Doing instant follow on that. <clears throat> I found them on Twitter. Do, am I am I looking at the wrong one? Oh yeah, Dead and Buried is one I'm really looking forward to. Looks like they took your your thing because they're on Twitter now, man. And I mean, like, they must have just got on Twitter because there's like only 26 followers at this point. So if anybody's like into soundtracks and CD soundtracks and stuff like that, I recommend you go to Twitter and you follow Hell and Wolf Records. Let them know that that Aaron and Jamie sent you. <laughs> that Dead and Buried release looks incredible. I've seen like some stuff they've shown from it, the different artwork and stuff. I, I'm gonna go with the I'd go with the classic art for that one, I think. I'm extremely impressed with this company. I think you put them on there, man. So literally, they did just went on. I just like uh, if you check, you you got me on Twitter anyway, Jamie. Then uh, you'll see that I just signed that I just signed up to them. I wonder if they'd be interested in anybody doing CD reviews. I could do that. I could branch out. Anything movie related, right? 
Hey, you're welcome, man. Mortuary and House on Sorority Row. I'm just so excited about those two. I want some of these soundtracks. I got very few soundtracks in my collection. I, you know, I love Midnight Movie. Did anybody see this one? Like, I remember buying this one. I think about it like, oh, God, a cheap version. Like, not cheap. Well, I think about it at a Dollarama type place uh, when I first got it. But I actually, I actually dug this film. So, and it was, oh, there's a female composer on this. I'm sure there is. Uh, Penka Koneva. Oh, by the way, happy International Women's Day. I'm not quite sure if there's any any ladies on here, but if there are, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> Will I never take kickbacks for promoting companies? Um... So any company that, that wants that wants to send me like stuff to review, I, I definitely take review copies. I'll, I'm, I'll be honest with the stuff though. Uh, and just to let you know, like, yes, I have been in the in the past offered. Uh, I won't say from where, like a, that place that I work with, but I was offered. Uh, well, I was I was offered money to. Uh, to talk about and to show like the stuff and I I'm not sure if that's something that a lot of that some people do but it's not something that I do which of the Friday 13th movies had the Alice Cooper Center part 6 uh, part 6 is uh, for, from Constructor I could feed my Frankenstein uh, of course, a man behind the mask. You know that was made. They did a couple versions of the man behind the mask, actually. Um, you know he's back. Teenage Frankenstein. I love Teenage Frankenstein. Those plays. I, I think Teenage Frankenstein plays when they're in the uh, when they're in the uh, in the RV. Jamie, as always, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for showing us this new company that we didn't know about before. Keep an eye out if you're a big fan of Jamie's stuff. And Jamie, like, scores stuff as well. So check out Storm Warning on, on Hell and Wolf Records. And also check out Long Weekend. Not Nature's Grave. Long Weekend on Hell and Wolf Records because they should soon be coming up. And if you subscribe to Hell and Wolf on Twitter, then uh, uh, feel free to, to let them know that, uh, that we sent you. But I think that's a good way to go out for tonight. I really do. So there you go, guys. We've learned about a new like record company tonight. Thanks to Jason. This video was done. Uh, you got this video tonight, courtesy of Jason, and and Jason sending some incredible films my way. I am so eternally grateful uh, to Jason for that. Jason, man, you rock. <clears throat> I have some some more stuff coming later on in the week when I get that all and box that on here as well and uh, my birthday at the end of the month anybody wants to send something my way you know how to contact me um, feel free to do so check out Helen Wolf Records a company we just found out about here on the website together also be sure to look into some of this great stuff that's coming MVD Rewind got some good stuff coming out of course on the 11th uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get it now, but on the 11th, there's going to be the limited editions for uh, Mon Macabre. We'll be looking at that. Ronan Flick sale, we looked at that in depth, so if you guys came in late and, and missed out on that, uh, definitely go back and watch the uh, watch this video, because the Ronan Flick sale is also coming up. Well, Jason, you made this video happen, and we found out about a Ronan Flick sale, MVD Rewinds, and Hell and Wolf Records, because this video happened tonight. I am Aaron. I want to thank you guys for the people. For I want to thank Jason for making this video happen. I want to thank the guys that uh, that donated on here tonight. You, 
that's that's incredibly amazing. I want to thank Jamie for coming in once more and uh, illuminating us to some of the stuff that we didn't know about. And for the people that let me know about the Rona Flick sale and to let me know about the uh, the MVD Rewind stuff as well, thank you guys so much. You guys make it incredible. I am Aaron. My voice is going. I got to get some tea. Yeah, actually, we do want rock. Uh, I'm going out right now. But go back a ways. I did an unboxing. I think I think you're really gonna like the unboxing because there's nine titles there and it's got some nice deep cuts. And uh, we went over the Rona Flick sale titles as well. Uh, actually, the sale starts tomorrow, I think, doesn't it? Or has it started now? But right now, it is time for tea, and I will see you guys here next time in the call to cinema. <laughs>